the black fungus infection that is spreading? What are some of the symptoms to watch out for and how can one detect it earlier? We've got Dr. Sanjeev Bad Badwar, who is the head ENT services at Kokila Bay and Dhirubhai Ambani Hospital, now joining us on the show. Thank you so much, uh, doctor, for taking time out and joining in. To begin with, let's just start off by understanding some of the early symptoms that one needs to watch out for and what would you need to really, uh, when should alarm bells really uh, go off uh, for a possibility of the uh, infection of black fungus? The very word black fungus really uh, is worrying a lot of people all over the country. They've battled COVID. They've come out with this. And here's something new. So essentially, it's very important to highlight what are the symptoms of this fungal disease. So anyone who has recovered from COVID should watch out for headache, facial pain, pain around the eyes, swelling of the eyes, redness of the eyes, a steady loss of vision. And sometimes, if you see the mobility of the eyes, that gets restricted. Apart from that, there will be nasal symptoms like nasal blockage, some kind of nasal discharge, swelling around the nose. When you open the mouth, sometimes there could be a blackish discoloration of the palate. A lot of patients have come with symptoms of dental pain, loosening of the teeth. Some people present with fever and very rarely patients do have cough with blood streak in the sputum. Some subset of patients also present with uh, cranial nerve palsies. Essentially, some of the cranial nerves in the upper region of the body get paralyzed. So these are some of the common symptoms which need to be highlighted and patients should watch out for this. And in case any of these symptoms do occur, please contact your medical care practitioner. Okay. And so um, what tests, a doctor, does one need to take in order to ascertain that they have the infection, mucormycosis in the suspected patients and, uh, you know, some sort of a sure shot way of identifying that this is actually a case? See, first is a very careful history, but there is no shortcut here. A careful clinical examination, preferably done by an ENT surgeon who would examine him in his clinic and do what is called a diagnostic nasal endoscopy. Essentially, you have a nasal endoscope with a camera and you peek into the nose and have a look. Is there any discharge? Is there any blackish debris? Is there something which looks like a fungus? And if that is seen, there is a high index of suspicion. The next step would be taking a swab. So the swab is sent for what is called a KOH mount and for a fungal culture. You get the report of a KOH mount in a couple of hours, which is pretty accurate. Recently, our hospital is also starting what is called a PCR test. A PCR test, basically, you take scrapings from the inside of the nose and send it for an examination. And you get the report in a couple of hours. Sometimes patients have symptoms related to muca, which involves the lungs. So in such cases, what is called a bronchoalveolar washout is done. The secretions are collected and sent for fungal examination in terms of stains and culture. Very, very rarely, if the picture of COVID affecting the lung and COVID uh, associated mucor mycosis both happen at the same time. Sometimes a CT guided biopsy is done. Apart from this, what is fairly diagnostic are scans. And in this context, uh, we recommend 
an MRI with a contrast. So if you collate your examination, your swab, and your imaging, you arrive at a diagnosis. But a clinical examination would really give you a lot of insight and raise your index of suspicion. Right. Dr. Badwar, just, you know, one very important question. Is black fungus only uh, for COVID-19 recovering patients or non-COVID people or uh, can also catch it? You see, what happens is if you're working in a tertiary care hospital, you do see mucor cases. But before the pandemic, we would see one or two in a year. And in a busy city, maybe 10 to 15 in a year. They would mainly occur in patients with very high diabetes, poorly controlled diabetes, who are immune compromised, who have had transplants, who are on chemotherapy and the like. So, mucor was present in non-COVID patients too, but nothing like what we're seeing now. Right. Dr. Badwar also wanted to understand uh, how expensive is the process of uh, the treatment given that it involves multidisciplinary approach. Uh, how expensive is it really if you could just you know, share that with us? As far as the treatment is concerned, the treatment is also multimodality. Surgery remains one of the primary modalities of treatment. Essentially what happens is there is dead tissue, there is fungus in it, and there is a clear demarcation between dead and healthy tissue. So when you go in for surgery, it is targeted. You don't always know what you want to do. So you have to be flexible and have an open mind and the imaging guides you regarding what needs to be done. So surgical debridement is done. This could be just a septoplasty, a standard functional endoscopic surgery, partial maxillectomy, total maxillectomy, skull-based surgery, craniofacial surgery, and sometimes exenteration of the eye. So basically, it is radical surgery to remove dead tissue. Once this is done, medical therapy kicks in, which is essentially the drug of choice is liposomal amphotericin B, which is normally given in severe cases for a period of four to six weeks. Now, this is a very expensive drug. Um, uh, the daily therapy varies from around 30 to 40,000 per day. So you can imagine the kind of expense which a patient has to, um, has to afford. In less severe cases, after about two weeks, oral medication is sometimes started, which is a little less expensive. And in very severe cases, after four to six weeks, maintenance therapy is again given for a period of one to two months. Some cases have very severe disease. So we offer adjunctive treatment in terms of hyperbaric oxygen, statins, and sometimes iron lowering agents. So it's an expensive proposition and uh, it's a long process. It takes a month or two. Regarding the cure, now mucor by itself uh, has a very high mortality rate varying from 30 to 40 percent. That's one. The second point is, it's an extremely time-sensitive disease. Every day you delay treatment, say over a period of a week, the case fatality doubles from 30 to 60 plus. That's why we say mucor is a medical emergency. It needs to be picked up fast. It needs to be treated aggressively. And of course, prevention is always better than cure. And finally, can you just walk us through what some of the common myths are around this disease and how one can perhaps prevent themselves from catching the infection? So first, I'll take the myths. There are a lot of myths regarding mucor. So the first myth is mucor is black fungus. Like I mentioned at the beginning of my talk, this belongs to a family called mucorales, and this is not a black fungus. It causes tissue necrosis. So when you look at the disease part, it's black. 
That's why colloquially everyone calls it the black fungus. But the black fungus by itself is a separate fungus which has melanin in its spores. That's one. The next is mucor is normally present in the atmosphere, both outdoors and indoors, and it doesn't harm you. The next, mucor is not contagious. It does not pass from one person to another. So essentially what happens is, if you have COVID, it uh, affects the tissues, there is cell death, tissue necrosis, and then the fungus comes in. Regarding how do you prevent it? So essentially what is important is, what are the risk factors? Who is at risk for mucor? So the medical authorities all over India have gone into this in detail. And they've issued certain guidelines. So essentially, People who have high diabetes, poorly controlled diabetes are at risk. People who have been exhibited to immune modulating drugs are at risk. People who have had prolonged ICU stay may be at risk. People who are immune compromised, who have had transplants, who have solid tumor or hematological malignancies are at risk. Dr. Badwar, thank you so much for putting things into perspective and giving our viewers a better insight into the black fungus and, uh, you know, what really causes it and uh, how one can remain protected.